the project began when I was lucky enough to inherit quite a large sum from my father when he died in 2015. And um, I'm the end of the line, there's no one else in the family, so I thought what would be a good use of my father's estate. One of the things that I came up with was to, to build some kind of eco house. I wanted a house that was made of timber and that the timber be sourced as locally as possible and um, that was one of the things that attracted me to Makar. The entire process from the, the initial design work all the way through to handing over the house is an integrated process. So the whole thing is connected up and so, so we're able to give our customers consistency right across design quality, uh, workmanship uh, in terms of the, the quality of, of the delivery programme and cost. I went to a presentation by Neil Sutherland of Macker at uh, a local uh, green homes exhibition in, in Inverness and I felt as he was talking that he and I were on the same wavelength. We were interested in the larger implications of the decisions we make. So the environmental aspects, uh, hence we, we tend to use uh, unchemically treated non-toxic materials. I asked him if he would consider taking on the challenge of, of building a passive house, designing and building a passive house and uh, um, possibly to his own regret he said yes. <laughs> the important thing about a business is that it keeps evolving and developing over time as the circumstances change. So we've got to a point when we, we have reached net zero with the upfront carbon issues, embodied carbon, but we also need to know that uh, the operational carbon uh, uh, credentials are, are, um, are correct. So Passive House gives you that opportunity. The best people to figure out how to improve a process are the people actually undertaking that process. And we do that in a cross-sectoral way. So we have design, technical, production uh, coming together to discuss the best way to actually to put the houses together. It's not a top-down kind of process where design, for example, an architect is telling the production guys how to make things. It, it's an agreement across the, the organisation. The Passive House um, benchmark has become quite important and, and I think it's, it's, um, it's now well established. And we look at it as a quality standard. Uh, so, so what we've had to do is really look at the specifics, particularly around air tightness and thermal bridging, the kind of insulation performance, and then the components, windows, and all this kind of thing comes into it. But essentially, um, what we've done there, we, we simply had to increase the, the fabric performance of the house by a percentage. Okay, so it wasn't very much, it was something like 15% more than we, we normally do as a standard. Now what that's done, that forced us into looking at uh, some of these issues a, a little bit more, more intently. And it's taken a little bit of time because you need to plan everything carefully. But, and we have to change all our, all, our, all our standard details. We've got 72 standard details, by the way. <laughs> and uh, that, so we've had to, to adjust them. So we're now using uh, a rigid uh, wood fibre insulation product to wrap the entire building. Maca actually came up with a basic design very quickly and we were lucky with the planning process too. That went through very quickly and smoothly. The way the floor is built is, is quite heavily constrained by the passive house process so we had to pour a concrete floor and perhaps the pouring of that concrete floor was had the highest carbon footprint of uh, of any aspect of the build. The house was made wind and water tight at, at quite an early stage, but the, the fitting out of the house took, took the rest of the year, really. 
To date, I've exported three times as much electric as, as I've actually used. Any spare energy that the photovoltaics generate go first to heating the water and then to charge the battery on my electric van and anything that's spare after that gets exported to the grid. So it is, it is proving to be a very energy efficient house and it's not a hair shirt thing, I mean it is comfortable to live in as well. We're moving to the point where all of our buildings have um, carbon accounting, so that's both upfront and operational. And the best way to actually guarantee that is to go through the PHPP process, frankly. I'm very happy with the house. It's warm in the winter when it needs to be and it's cool in the summer when it needs to be. Inside it's not completely finished. I'm, for various reasons, I'm, I'm still unpacking after a year. <laughs> and that's a long story, but uh, I'm looking forward to, to making more of a home of it. We believe in the Highlands. It's where we live, we want the best for our region. We, we, we want to, you know, we've got fantastic forests. You know, why don't we turn those forests into, into added value products that can be used in very high quality buildings? And the, the key to doing that is, is people, investment, a long-term kind of vision for, for the region. Uh, so we're connected with that. That's, that's really important to us. It's kind of like, um, using the, the power that, that business has really to, to make a difference, uh, socially, economically, environmentally.